Welcome to the Agile Shop. In this video, we will show you how your Agile team can get started with Scrum in Monday.com. First, you need to create an account for Monday Dev. Monday Dev is a product by Monday.com specifically for Agile development and product teams. This product allows you to create sprints and integrate with GitHub, GitLab Figma, and more. You can try it for free with the link below from the video description. Once you create your account, your Monday Dev home screen should look something like this. The best way to get started with your own Scrum team is to use the existing Scrum template. To do this, click the green button and select Scrum Team. It will take a minute for the entire template to load. Once it's done, you should see the Scrum Team folder on the left side. Under this folder, there are multiple boards, like the Sprint Boards, Tasks, Epics, Bugs, and Retrospective. Let's quickly review each one of them. The Task Board is your main board. This board will host your sprints and user stories. The sprints are listed as groups with the backlog at the bottom. Some of the columns part of this template are the tasks, the owner, your status, which you can change the name or color for each one. The priority can be changed as well. Keep in mind all these columns and values can be customized to support your own process and workflow. We have two columns for estimation. This estimation is in story points. One for estimation, which is used before the sprint starts, and one for actual story points, which gets filled out after the user story was complete. This other column shows you can pull information from GitHub once you integrate the applications. There are other columns, for example, the Epic column. The Epic is used here as the parent of a task or user story. You can map multiple tasks to an Epic. We will see more on this under the Epic board, which we will review in a second. If you need any additional columns, you can add them from here. When the team is ready to start a sprint, you just have to click the Start button on the right side. Once the sprint is active, you can use the active sprint view we have here at the top. This will filter the board by the active sprint only. If some of your tasks require sub-items, you can create one by clicking the drop down here and fill out the description of your sub-item. We can also switch to the Kanban view. I personally like this view once the sprint is started. Under this view, the tasks are displayed by status. If we want to change the data displayed on each card, you can click the settings on the right side. For example, if a task has a specific due date, you can activate this field by clicking here. During standup, you can use the standup view, which is a dashboard view. This visual will show you the progress and other live sprint information. You can customize and add any other charts or metrics you will like to see. Speaking about metrics, if we go back to our active sprint, we can see our burndown chart here. This will show you the amount of work that has been completed in a sprint and the total work remaining. Once the sprint is complete, you can click the Complete button. If you have any tasks left over, you move them to the next sprint or backlog. Next, let's look at the Sprint Board. I actually call this the Sprint Management Board. Actually, let's rename this to the Sprint Management Board. This board manages your sprints. It allows you to define and capture the sprint goal, set your sprint start and end date. Under the Tasks column, you can see all the user stories per each sprint. To the right, you can even see total user stories per each sprint and status progress from this board. Some of the sprint information we saw under the tasks board is being pulled from here. Next, let's look at the epic board. This board should probably be called the roadmap board. The items created here are the epics. This example template seems to bundle them by quarter with the backlog at the bottom. It has a planned timeline, priority, status, and more. From this task column, we can see the mapping of these epics to our tasks. Once they are mapped, you can see them here. To the right, you can even see the tasks progress with total story points. These number listed are the sum of the story points of all the user stories we have mapped under each epic. This is a pretty cool feature. You can see these epics in multiple types of views as well. For example, you can see them in a traditional Gantt view. The development team itself might not use this view, but it could be useful for program management or leadership. There are all kinds of ways to filter or visualize this data, as you can see here. Another view I like is the Kanban view, just like we saw our user stories from the active sprint earlier. You can change the statuses if you like to match your own workflow, and this view could be used as a portfolio view, especially if there are multiple Agile teams using the same roadmap. Next, let's look at the bugs board and then the retrospective. This template does come with a dedicated bug board. Depending of the type of work your team does or your internal process, this board might not be needed. In my opinion, this board is for a team that does a lot of operation type of work. One cool column is the time tracking column. This column allows you to track how long a task takes to complete. You can start the time by clicking on it. 
A better way is to create an automation which starts the time once the status has been changed. You can do this from the Automation Center. There are a lot of build-in automations. In our case, we can just search for time tracking, and you can see this one here. This one already does what we want based on status. You can click on it and change the parameters to your own use case. Pretty cool, right? You can pretty much automate anything you need with custom automation. All right, let's look at our retrospective board. This retrospective board collects the team feedback per sprint. While the team discusses each feedback during the session, the type column can capture the action the team will like to take per each item. They can flag the feedback with one of these actions. The actions listed here can be changed and customized as well. The team can also vote on items by using the vote column. I personally prefer the start, stop, continue type of retrospective. If you want to see how I created a custom board for the start, stop, continue type of retrospective, check out the next video. Try out Monday Dev Free for yourself and see if it's right for your team by using the link in the video description. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more hands-on agile videos.